Good morning, my friends. Uh, we will continue to talk about atherosclerosis. So today is the second lecture. Uh, I recall you. So I am uh, Dr. Armen, Professor Armen Astvatsatrian from Yerevan, Armenia. So let's go. Uh, the presence of atherosclerosis disease is one is one vascular territory, territory increases the likelihood of disease of documented vascular disease in other vascular territories. Patients with non-coronary atherosclerotic vascular disease have cardiac event cardiac event rates com comparable to those of patients with non-coronary artery disease, and they are now considered to have coronary artery disease risk equivalent and should be treated as uh, aggressively. Okay? So, atherosclerosis is initially asymptomatic, often for decades. Symptoms and signs develop when lesions impede blood flow. Transient ischemic symptoms, for example, stable exertional angina, transient ischemic attack, attack, attacks, intermittent claudication may develop when stable plaques grow and reduce the arterial lumen by more than 70%. So vasoconstriction can change can uh, change a lesion that doesn't limit blood flow into a severe or complete stenosis. Symptoms of unstable angina or myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, or rest or, or rest pain in the in the limbs may develop when the when unstable un unstable plaque plaques rupture and acutely occlude the major artery with superimposition of thrombosis or embolism. Atherosclerosis may cause sudden death without preceding stable or unstable angina pectoris. Pay attention. Atherosclerosis involvement of the atrial wall can lead to aneurysms and arterial dissection, which can manifest as pain, a pulsatile mass, a pulsatile mass absent or absent pulses or sudden death. So, diagnosis of atherosclerosis. Approach to diagnosis of atherosclerosis depends on the presence of or absence of symptoms. Patients with symptoms and signs of ischemia are evaluated for the amount and location of vascular occlusion by various invasive and non-invasive tests, depending on the organ involved. Such patients also should be evaluated of atherosclerosis risk factors by using history and, or, and physical examination, uh, fasting, lipid profile, uh, plasma glucose and glucose, uh, glucosylate hemoglobin levels. So plasma glucose and glucosylated hemoglobin levels, glucosylated hemoglobin. Patients with documented disease at one side, for example, peripheral arteries, should be evaluated for diseases other sites, for example, coronary and carotid arteries. Because not all atherosclerotic plaques have similar risk, various imaging technologies are being studied as a way to identify patients especially vulnerable to rupture. However, these techniques are not yet used, used uh, clinically worldwide. Non-invasive imaging techniques that can assess plaque morphology and characteristics include three-dimensional vascular ultrasonography, computed tomography and angiography, magnetic resonance, MRI angiography. Invasive catheter-based tests are also used. These include, these include intravascular ultrasonography, which uses an ultrasound transducer on the tip of a catheter to produce images to the arterial lumen and wall, angioscopy, angioscopy which, use, uh, which uses special uh, fibrotropic Fiber optic, fiber optic uh, catheters that can directly visualize the arterial surface. Plaque tem thermography, thermography, which is used to detect the increased temperature in plaques with active inflammation. Optical coherence tomography, which uses in, in infrared laser light for imaging. Elastography, which is used to identify soft, lipid-rich plaques. Immunosyntigraphy, is a non-invasive alternative uh, that uses radioactive tracers that localize invulnerable plaque. Positron emission tomography (PET). Imaging of the vascular is another emerging approach to assess vulnerable plaque. In addition to the fasting lipid profile and plasma glucose and hemoglobin A1, 
see measurements, some clinicals measure serum markers of inflammation, so C-reactive protein levels more than 3.1 milligram per liter or, or more than 29.5 nanomol liter are highly predictive of cardiovascular events. Highly predictive, yes, if that's right. So, concerning asymptomatic patients is screening. In patients with risk factors for atherosclerosis but no symptoms or signs of ischemia, the role of, of additional testing beyond the lipid profile is unclear. Although imaging studies such as carotid ultrasonography to measure intimal media thickness and other studies uh, that can detect atherosclerotic plaque are being studied, they do not reliably improve prediction of ischemic events, over-assessment of risk factors or established prediction tools and, uh, and are not recommended. An exception is computer tomography imaging for coronary artery calcium, for example, to obtain a calcium score that is to obtain a calcium score for which there is a more robust evidence for risk reclassification. It may be useful for refining risk estimates and for deciding on statin therapy in select patients. In select patients, for example, those with intermediate risk, family history, or premature cardiovascular disease. Most guidelines recommend, recommend lipid profile screening in patients with any of the following characteristics. So men more than 40 years, women more than, more than 50 years and postmenopausal post women, type 2 diabetes, family history of family, uh, familial hip hypercholesterolemia, hypercholesterolemia or premature cardiovascular disease, that is age of onset less than 50, 55 years in male or first degree relative and less than 65 years in female, first degree relative. Metabolic syndrome, hypertension, chronic inflammatory conditions. So currently the American Heart Association uh -huh, recommend this using the approved cohort risk assessment equitations to estimate life, lifetime and 10-year risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. This calculator has replaced previous risk calculation tools, uh, very famous Framingham score. The new risk calculator is based on sex, age, race, total and HDL cholesterol levels, systolic blood pressure and whether blood pressure is being treated, diabetes and smoking status. The European, our European Cardiovascular Society and the European Atherosclerosis Society 2016 guideline suggests using the systemic coronary risk estimation score which calculates risk based on age, gender, smoking, systolic blood pressure and total cholesterol to estimate the 10-year risk of the first fatal atherosclerotic event. So end point, final end point. For patients de deemed at intermediate risk, lipoproteinal measurements, measurement has been suggested to help refine classification. Urinary albuminuria, more than 30 mg albumin on 24 hours, is a marker for renal disorders and their progression, as well as a strong prediction of cardiovascular and non-cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. However, the direct relationship between albuminuria and atherosclerosis has not established. So about treatment, <clears throat> lifestyle changes is the first, absolutely. Lifestyle changes is the first. Other things are not so important as lifestyle changes. Primordial is lifestyle changes. So diet, good normal diet, smoking, physical activity. Drug treatment or diagnosis, diagnosis risk factors, antiplatelet drugs, statins, possibly angiotensin covalent enzyme inhibitors, beta blockers. Treatment involves aggressively modification of risk factors for slow progression and induced regression of existing plaques. Lowering LDL cholesterol to below a certain target is no longer recommended. At the lower, the better approach is currently favorite. Lifestyle changes include diet modification, smoking cessation and regular participation in physical activity. Drugs to treat dyslipidemia, hypertension, diabetes are often required. These lifestyle changes and drugs direct, directly or indirectly improve endotelial function, reduce inflammation and improve clinical outcomes. Statin can decrease atherosclerosis-related morbidity and mortality even when serum cholesterol is normal or slightly high. But it's questionable, huh? 
Antiplatelet drugs help in patients with atherosclerosis. Patients with coronary artery disease may, be, may benefit additionally from AC inhibitors and beta blockers. So diet, several changes are beneficial. Less saturated fat, non-trans fats, it's okay. Fewer re refined high carbohydrates, it's very important. More fruits and vegetables, it's okay. More fiber is okay. Moderate alcohol, not elimination. Huh? Substantial, of course, the tobacco keeps smoking. Uh, substantial decreases in saturated fat and refined and processed carbohydrates and increases in carbohydrates with fiber. fiber. For example, fruits, vegetables are recommended. These dietary changes are a prerequisite for lipid control and weight reduction and are essential for all patients. Calorie intake should be limited to keep weight within the more uh, normal range. So, but my point of view, when we, when we talk about calorie, we talk about carbohydrates. This color is okay for carbohydrates. Small decreases in fat intake do not appear to lessen or stabilize atherosclerosis. Effective changes requires uh, limiting fat intake to 20 milligram to 20 grams or a day, consisting of six or to ten uh, grams of polyunsaturated fat with omega-6 linoleic acid and omega-3 uh, acosapentaenoic acid, acosapentonic acid, and docosahexonic acid. I'm sorry, my pronunciation. Huh? So fatty acids is in equal proportion to less than two grams of saturated fat, and the rest is uh, as non-saturated fat. Trans fats, which are uh, highly heterogenic, should be avoided. Okay, this is very good. Increasing carbohydrates to compensate for decreased saturated fats in the diet increases plasma triglycerides levels and reduce HDL levels. Thus, any cal caloric deficiency should be made up with proteins and the saturated fats rather than simple carbohydrates. Exercise fat and refined sugar intake should be, should be avoided, especially in people at risk of diabetes, although sugar intake hasn't been directly related to cardiovascular risk for the moment. Instead, consumption of complex carbohydrates, for example, vegetables, whole grains, is encouraged. Fruits and vegetables, five daily servings, seems to decrease risk of coronary atherosclerosis, but whether this effect is due to uh, phytochemicals or to proportional decrease in saturated fat in two and increase in fiber and vitamin intake is unclear. Uh, phyto phytochemicals, uh, called flavonoids in red and purple grapes, red wine, black teas and dark beers, appears especially protective. Uh, higher concentrations in red wine may help explain why incidence of coronary atherosclerosis in the French <coughs> is relatively low. Even though they use more tobacco, yes, and consume more f <coughs> <coughs> sorry, fat that Americans do. But there are differences in fat. Huh? No clinical data indicate that eating flavonoid-rich foods or using supplements instead of foods prevents prevents, for the moment, prevents atherosclerosis, increases uh, for this moment. Huh? Uh, increased fiber intake decreases total cholesterol and may have a beneficial effect on glucose and insulin levels. Dietary intake, at least 5 to 10 grams of uh, soluble fiber, for example, old brain, beans, soya products, psyllium, is recommended. This, this amount decreases LDL by amount 5%. Insoluble fiber, for example, cellulose, linen, doesn't appear to affect cholesterol, but may confer additional health benefits, for example, reduced risk of colon cancer, possibly by stimulating bowel movement on reducing content time with dietary car carcinogens. However, excessive fiber interference with the, the absor absorption of certain minerals and vitamins, in general foods rich in phytochemicals and vitamins are also high, uh, in, uh, in also rich in fiber, fiber. Alcohol increases HDL and has poorly defined antithrombotic, antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. These effects appear to be the same for wine, beer and hard liquor and occur at moderate levels of consumption. About 30 milliliters of ethanol, 
one ounce, eh, one ounce, contained about two average servings of typical alcoholic beverages. Five to six times a week protects against coronary atherosclerosis, which that is sure. However, however, the higher higher doses alcohol can cause significant health problems. Thus, the relationship between alcohol and total mortality rate is G-shaped. Mortality rate is lowest for men who consume less than 40 drinks a week and women who consume less uh, than 9 drinks a week. People who consume greater amounts of alcohol should cut back. However, clinicians are hesitant to recommend that non-drinkers begin consuming begin consuming alcohol based on any apparent, apparent protective effect. So, if you don't drink, don't start to drink. There is little evidence that dietary supplementations with vitamins, phytochemicals and trace minerals reduces the risk of atherosclerosis. The one is exception is fish oil sub supplements. Although alternative medicines are health foods and health foods are becoming more popular and some may have minor effects on blood pressure or cholesterol, these treatments are not always proven safe or effective and may have negative interaction uh, with proven drugs. Levels of coenzyme Q10, Q10, which is necessary for basic function of cells, tend to decrease with age and may be low in patients with certain heart and other chronic diseases. Thus, coenzyme Q10 supplementation has been used or recommended, but its therapeutic benefit remains controversial. So it's called for emergency. Yeah? So anyway, physical activity, regular physical activity, example, for example, 30 to 45 minutes of walking, running, swimming or cycling three to five times a week, reduces incidence of some risk factors, hypertension, dyslipidemia, diabetes, coronary artery disease, for example, myocardial infarction and death attributable to atherosclerosis in patients with or and without previous ischemic events. Whether the association is causal or merely indicates that healthier people are more likely to exercise regularly is unclear. Optimal intensity, duration, frequency and type of exercise haven't been established, but most evidence suggests an, in, an inverse linear relationship between aerobic physical activity and risk. Walking regularly increases the distance patients with peripheral vascular disease can walk without pain. Without pain. An exercise uh, program uh, that involves aerobic exercise has a clear role in preventing atherosclerosis and promoting weight loss. Before starting a new exercise program, the elderly and people who have risk factors for atherosclerosis or who have had recent ischemic events should be evaluated by a physician. Evaluation includes history, physical examination, and assessment of risk factors. So, concerning drugs, antiplatelet drugs, oral antiplatelet drugs are essential because most complications result from plaque fissure or rupture, leading to platelet activation and thrombosis. The following are used aspirin, tianopiridine drugs such as clopidogrel, plarazogrel, and, and ticagrelor. But don't forget to say to your patient to consume. Uh, normal quantity of water, normal water, is absolutely important. Uh, instead of take just aspirin, huh? would be, aspirin is most widely used, but despite its proven benefits, it remains underused. It's indicated for secondary prevention, may be considered for primary prevention of coronary atherosclerosis in patients at very high risk. For example, patients with diabetes, with or without atherosclerosis, patients with more than 20% risk of cardiac events within 10 years in whom bleeding risk is not pro uh, prohibitive and patients and intermediate uh, risk who have a 10 to 20 percent risk of cardiac events within 10 years and have low risk of bleeding. Recent evidence suggests that the net benefit of aspirin in primary prevention is questionable, especially at low risk individuals, and that careful selection of patients is needed based on patients' preferences and other considering the potential risk and benefits of aspirin for each individual, for example, potential, um, and that is potential harm in patients more than 70 years of, or patients at higher risk for bleeding. Optimal dose and duration are unknown, but 81 to, uh, in the uh, in United States to 32 and 20, uh, 325 milligrams as in Europe, orally once a day, identically is commonly used for primary and secondary prevention. However, 81 mg is preferred because this dose may minimize risk of bleeding, particularly when aspirin is used in combination with other antithrombotic drugs. In about 
10 to 20 percent of patients taking aspirin for secondary prevention, ischemic events recur. The reason may be aspirin resistance, assessed to detect lack of thromboxane suspension, indicated by evaluated urinary 11 dehydrothrombuxan B2 are being studied for, close, uh, studied for clinical use. Some evidence suggests that ibuprofen can interfere with aspirin's antithrombotic anti effect, so other non-steroid anti-inflammatory dra drugs and NSAIDs uh, are recommended for patients taking aspirin for prevention. How, however, uh, all non-steroid drugs, anti-inflammatory drugs, some more than others, including uh, cyclooxygenase 2, COX-2, selective in inhibitors appear to increase cardiovascular risk. Clobetogrel is usually 75 mg orally once a day, is subst substituted for aspirin when ischemic events recur in patients taking aspirin and in patients intolerant of aspirin. Clopidogrel in combination with aspirin is effective in treating acute ST segment and non ST segment elevation stem and non stem myocardial infarction. The combination is also given for 9 to 12 months after percutaneous intervention to reduce the risk of, of recurrent ischemic events. Resistance to clopidogrel also occurs. Prazugrel and ticagrelor or ticagrelor are newer and more effective drugs than clopidogrel for coronary disease prevention in select patient groups. Ticlopidine is no longer widely used because it causes severe neutropenia in one person of users and has severe adverse effects. So concerning statins, uh, very questionable term, question, uh, very questionable point. Statins primarily lower, primary lower LDL cholesterol. Other potential benefits effects include enhance in total nitric oxide production, stabilization of terasphrotic plaques, reduced re, uh, lipid accumulation and in the, atrial, in the arterial wall, and regression of plaques. Statins are recommended as preventing therapy in four groups of patients compromised, comprised all comprised, of course, of those with any of the following clinical atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, uh, LDL cholesterol more than 190 milligram deciliter, this is more than 4.92 uh, 4 millimoliters, the age 40 to 75 years with diabetes and LDL cholesterol 70 to 189 milligram on deciliter, that is 1.81 uh, to 4.9 millimol on liter and age 40 to 75 years with LDL cholesterol 70 to 189 milligram deciliter and estimated and risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular uh, disease more than 7.5 percent. There is also support for the use of statins in patients with other risk factors including family history of premature atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease uh, that is age of onset less than 55 in male first degree relative or less than 65 in female first degree relative. High sensitivity C-reactive protein more than 2 uh, milligram on liter, this is 19.05 nanomol liter. Coronary artery calcium score more than uh, 300 Agast agaston units or more than 75 percentage for the patient's demographic. Ankle branch, uh, ankle branch of blood pressure index less than 0 0.9. Statin treatment is classified as high, moderate or low intensity as and, it, and it's given based on treatment group and age. Specific LDL cholesterol targets are no longer recommended to gui guide lipid lowering therapy. Instead, response to therapy is determined by whether LDL cholesterol levels decrease as expected based on therapy intensity. For example, patients receiving high-intensity therapy should have um, more than 50% decrease in LDL cholesterol. So, uh, concerning other drugs, angiotensin convertic enzyme AC inhibitors, angiotensin 2 receptor blockers, Zartans, azetimib, and proprotein uh, pro, uh, pro convertase subtisiline, dexin type 9, PCS, Chi 9 inhibitors, have anti-inflammatory properties that reduce risk of atherosclerosis independent of other effects on blood pressure and lipid and glucose levels. The factor XA, uh, 10 X, uh, XA inhibitor, Rivaroxaban, also decreases risk of cardiovascular events, although the mechanisms of this effect is unknown. AC inhibitors and angiotensin 2 receptor blockers, Zartans, inhibit the contributions of, of angiotensin to endotelian dysfunction and inflammation. 
Azetimib also lowers LDL cholesterol by blocking the uptake of cholesterol from the small inten in intestine via inhibition of the Neumann peak C1 like protein, Neumann, Neumann peak C1 line like one protein. Azetimib added to standard ther thetin therapy has been shown to reduce cardiovascular events in patients with prior cardiovascular events event and LDL cholesterol more than 70 milligrams uh, deciliter, so 1.8 millimol on liters. PCSK9 inhibitors are monoclonal, monoclonal antibodies that keep PCSK9 from attaching to LDL receptors, leading to increased recycling of these receptors to the plasma membranes, leading membranes, membrane, lead to further uh, clearance of plasma LDL cholesterol to the liver. LDL cholesterol is lowered by 40 to 70 percent. Long-term clini long clinical trials have shown reduction in atherosclerosis and cardiovascular events. These drugs are most useful in patients with familial hypercholesterolemia, patients with prior cardiovascular events with whose LDL is not at goal despite maximal medical therapy with statins and patients who require lipid lowering but have documented objective evidence of statin intolerance. The factor is XA inhibitor rivaroxaban at a dose of 2.5 mg orally twice a day decreases risk of cardiovascular events, cardiovascular death, stroke or myocardial infarction in patients with stable atherosclerotic vascular disease when added to aspirin 100 mg daily. The risk of major bleeding was higher in patients on rivaroxaban and aspirin than in patients on aspirin alone. Thiazolidine thiazolidine doin Thiazolidine don, sorry, my pronunciation, may control expression of pro-inflammatory agents. Other studies suggest that they increase the risk of coronary events. Folate, folic acid, 0.8 mg orally twice a day has been previously used to treat hyperhomocysteinemia, uh, uh, but doesn't appear to reduce the risk of acute coronary events. Vitamin B6 and B12 also lower homocysteine homocysteine levels, but the current data not, do not justify that they are used alone or in combination with folate. So macrolid and other antibiotics given to treat chronic uh, uh, occult, uh, occult uh, pneumonia infections and thereby suppress inflammation and theoretically alter the course of manifestation of atherosclerosis haven't been shown useful. So uh, key points. Huh? Risk factors for atherosclerosis include dyslipidemia, diabetes, cigarette smoking, family history, and psychosocial factors, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, and hypertension. Unstable plaques or often cause um, less than 50% stenosis, yet are more prone to rupture and cause acute thrombosis or embolic phenomena than are larger stable plaque, plaques. In asymptomatic patients, imaging tests to detect atherosclerosis probably do not help predict ischemic events better than standard assessment of risk factors. Stopping smoking, ex exercising, eating a diet low in saturated fat and refined carbohydrates and high in fiber and possibly consuming omega-3 fatty acids and moderate amounts of alcohol help in prevention and treatment. Antiplatelet drugs and depending on patient's factors statins and or angiotensin converting enzymes inhibitors also are helpful so uh, thank you for your attention my dear 